Hey guys, so we're going to be going over question 10, which is what is called a synthesis problem. And so it's, we're going to go ahead and take these four steps in determining what our product is going to look like. So let's go ahead and get started right away. And we've got a cyclohexane that in the first step is going to be reacted with a bromine and UV light. So what you need to know for this course is that if you have an alkane um, as your starting material, then you will pretty much always have either chlorination or bromination. And so you can go to uh, one of our previous videos to look at the steps that are involved in these, that reaction, uh, which include initiation, the first propagation step, the second propagation step, and then termination. Uh, so if you want to look at that mechanism, go ahead and just check out our previous videos. It's named Romination of Methane. But the product that we would get out of that first step is going to be the cyclohexane with an added bromine. Just one bromine, not both. All right. And so we've got step one down. Step two is what is called a bulky base reaction. That's KOT butyl, which is a bulky base bulky because it just has so much stuff on there. I'll actually draw it out here for you. It's got the T-butyl, which is here, uh, on that oxygen oxide. And so that having so much stuff on there is what makes it a bulky base. Your T-butyl alcohol is your solvent in this case. But what do you do with a bulky base? You do a Hoffman elimination reaction. And a Hoffman product is going to be the least substituted double bond. In this case, whether you put the double bond here or here, you're going to get the same uh, product, and so it doesn't really matter. What we need to know, though, is that we get a double bond out of that reaction. Okay, so now we've, we've knocked out two steps, and this is where we're going to start getting into our uh, more difficult step, you could say. So MCPBA, what does that stand for? M stands for meta, the C stands for chloro, P, peroxy, B, benzoic acid. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what occurs in this reaction that gives us the epoxide. Okay, so we're going to be going over the uh, mechanism of the concerted reaction that occurs in using MCPBA. So MCPBA, what that stands for is meta chloro peroxybenzoic acid. So meta being that it's in the 1-3 position on the benzene ring. Uh, chloro, peroxy, right over here, it's kind of like hydrogen peroxide. Uh, benzoic benzene acid. And so this is the acid part. Okay, so now this, like I said, happens in a concerted reaction, meaning that it's all happening at the same time. And this is what we left off with last time when we uh, took our bromine and then we did a KOT butyl, which is bulky base that resulted in the cyclohexene. And so now we're going to use the MCPBA to get the epoxide ring. But I want to just show you real quickly uh, the mechanism of that concerted reaction. I want you to follow along with me because this could show up as a assessment test where you have to show the arrows that are concerting that reaction or just in simply recognizing MCPBA. So let's start at this double bond here, which is essentially an extra pair of electrons. Uh, so that's your nucleophile. And so that pair of electrons is now going to hop out and grab onto that oxygen. So that's that bond right there. Okay, so now that oxygen here now has too many bonds. It wants to get rid of a bond because it has three, but it only wants two. So what's going to happen is we're going to get rid of this bond here by forming a double bond over here. Okay, so now in forming a double bond there, now we've got too many bonds at that carbon. So we're going to actually take this bond here, grab onto the hydrogen, and that's going to create a, that's going to create an alcohol there. Uh, we didn't show that. I didn't draw that out for you guys, but uh, maybe you can draw it out as practice just to ensure that you have everything figured out. Okay, so now we've grabbed onto that oxygen, but I mean, I'm sorry, we grabbed onto this hydrogen, but that hydrogen left its electrons behind. And so that hydrogen, its electrons up here, are going now to form, which are already attached to this oxygen, are now going to form the second bond that makes the epoxide, which is this guy right here. 
All right, so now that we've looked at the mechanism, let's go ahead and just draw out the product that we would get from MCPBA. And there's an important thing that you need to notice here that's going to play a big role in answering question 11, was where we're going to indicate the stereochemistry. When you do MCPBA, you're going to have a syn reaction, meaning that you're going to get a cis product. And so in this case, you're going to form a epoxide that is cis. Cis meaning that you have the connections going towards that oxygen forming the epoxide are both either going away from you, in this case away from you, or towards you. So you actually get both a 50-50 mixture of an epoxide that has the the bonds going away from you and an epoxide that has the bonds going towards you. And so that's going to play a big role into our question 11. And so we'll come back to that later. But for now, let's go ahead and just use the epoxide with the bonds going away from us. Okay, so we're taking just this product. Remember, we got 50 50 of each, but we're going to, just for the sake of this problem, uh, ignore the other one. And so we finish our third step. Now our fourth step is the acid catalyzed opening of the epoxide, which is gonna give us antidiols. So MCPBA was a syn reaction. Uh, H plus H2O is an anti reaction. And so you can also open up the epoxide using a base, but this problem we're gonna use the acid. So what's gonna happen here first uh, when you have a nucleophile like oxygen and then you've got an acid is you're going to protonate the epoxide grabbing onto that hydrogen and that's going to give us the protonated epoxide so now we basically have a good leaving group right because this epoxide that is now protonated um, is ready to, has so much strain on it that it's just ready to, to break away one of these bonds. And so that's where the water is going to come in. Because the next step of that mechanism is that the water is going to act as a nucleophile to attack either one of these sides. Sometimes you'll run into questions where you have, like, let's say, a methyl group coming off of there. Uh, and so you'll have to use the less hindered side um, which in that example would be over here. But in this case, you could attack from either side and be fine. So when you attack over there, you are going to be losing this bond to the oxygen because you would have, you would have too many bonds here uh, if you're going to be adding that oxygen. So as the water is attacking, we're going to lose this bond to the oxygen. And this is an SN2 reaction because we've got a good leaving group and a good nucleophile and we're substituting that in there and what we would get out of that is our oxygen now with two lone pairs of electrons and hydrogen and then we attach that water but the thing about SN2 reactions that we need to keep in mind is that we're going to invert the stereochemistry because this is doing a backside attack since these are both going away from you the water is going to attack in a way that is the easiest and in this case a backside attack and so you're going to have the water going towards you once it attaches and that is going to make the water have a positive charge you can now it has the oxygen has three bonds when it only wants to have two bonds so i think you can imagine what our next step would be and that would be a deprotonation And so what are we going to use to deprotonate? We're going to use, again, the water. There's plenty of water in your reaction. Um, and so we're going to act as a nucleophile to take a hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to leave its electrons behind. And that's going to give us our final product of antidiols. Anti meaning that they are in a trans configuration. And in the process, we resulted in H3O+.